you know, these theories and this, these theorists, I, they're so straight. It's just, I'm just exhausted with the whole thing. I, I can totally understand why there is a gap that exists between theory and between practice. It's not a gap, it's an abyss. It's a freaking chasm. It's okay, we get it. Well, how do you even know how to associate practice with all this theory that we're learning? I feel like pathos and personal um, you know, relations theory is pretty concrete and easy when you put it into patient terms. Well, like how? Okay, so I did read that pathos is, was one of the first theories that used patients as a partner in a nursing practice. Oh, so they're an active participant. That's pretty cool. You know, that's very innovative for the time. What else do you know? Yeah, she's um, theorized like four, um, four phases. The first phase is orientation, like when you're consulting um, a newly diagnosed patient on diabetes type 2. Hmm. Hey, Mrs. Copa. I'm Norma. I'm one of the uh, first practitioners here. How are you doing today? Okay, good. How are you? So, I'm good. I'm doing real good. So, um, what brings you in today? Um, I've been thirsty, um, drinking a lot, uh -huh. I have the cotton mouth, and I've been getting up several times during the night, maybe three or four times during the night, mm -hmm. having to urinate. Wow, okay. Are, have you been feeling more tired than usual? Um, quite a bit, quite a bit. Okay, I'm looking at some of your lab work here. Um, we pulled, you know, a little bit of lab when you first came in with the finger stick, and I see that your blood sugar is really high. Um, it was 311. Wow. Yeah, and we also went ahead and did a point of care um, A1C on you, and that's like a three-month average blood sugar. It gives us um, an idea in percent, like how sweet you are over the three months, and normal is uh, about four to five and a half. Yours was 11.8. Oh, I'm quite a sweetie. Oh, you know, yeah, just a little, almost a little too sweet. So is there diabetes in your family? Yes, um, my aunt had, um, what are you saying? Well, what I'm saying is, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you have diabetes. What does that mean? Can you go more? Well, um, some of the symptoms that you're telling me about, looking at the numbers from this lab work, you know, the frequent urination, um, uh, getting up throughout the night, being more thirsty than usual, um, those are pretty classic signs of diabetes. Um, nope, I don't, nope, 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 I don't have diabetes. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain that you do. Nope, nope, yeah, I don't. Have, have you been diabetes. having any yeast infections in your privates? Lord, yes, I can bake some bread. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, um, I, 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 how is your diet? Have you been um, having a lot? I, I have been drinking a lot of um, sodas and I love me a good red velvet cake. Oh, Lord, that's not helping the situation, not one single bit. Um, so, um, just looking at this, I, I think we need to get a little more lab work on you. The fact that, you know, the food part is, is a big part of helping control your diabetes, but um, with type 2 diabetes, a lot of times we do see that there's that hereditary strain, you know, within the family. Um, I want to get a little more lab work on you. We're going to uh, get you a meter, have the nurse show you how to give some insulin. Wait a minute, wait, wait, pill. wait. Did you say I had to take insulin? Yeah, yeah, we're going to we're gonna put you on insulin. It's the best way to get your blood sugar down. No, no, I can't be on insulin. I can't do needles. I'm terrified of needles. Well, now, let, let's just think about this for a minute. Calm down. <laughs> You're going to be fine. And what I can tell you is that Let's see in a couple of weeks what your blood sugars look like. Um, I'm going to really need you to try to commit to taking this insulin and the pill. And it might be that we can come off of the insulin down the road, but we got to get this sugars down now. Does that make sense? Well, can I think about it and maybe come back or revisit the situation? Maybe I can do better eating habits or... Well, that's all a part of it and getting educated is all a part of it, but... Um, I'm, I'm really going to need you to have to take this insulin to get this sugar down. we got to get this out of your system. Okay, Miss Norman. All right. 
So come on, and we'll get y'all sorted out. We got this. It's gonna be fine, okay? okay. All right, come oh, on. So I get it. So the orientation phase is like an introduction to the disease process. Yes. Gotcha. So let's read more on that, though. Yeah. So identification would be the next step. That's basically like reinforcing the best behaviors of the patient and redirecting the negative behavior. Hey, Miss Coppola, how you doing? Hi. How are you? Okay. And is one of the nurse practitioners. Nice to meet you. I'll be seeing you today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're back as follow up. Mm -hmm. Do we need we need to talk about managing your diabetes? Okay. Okay. So in doing that, we need for you to check your sugar three times a day. Three times a day? Yes, ma'am. This is a new diagnosis, so we need to see what your sugars are so we can come up with the best treatment plan for you. So you want me to check my sugar breakfast, lunch, and dinner? That's correct, ma'am. That's a bit much. Do you think you can handle that? Um, I can take the oral medication, but the shots or anything, or, you know, in trying to take the insulin, I don't think I can handle all of that. Okay. Well, can you try? I can try. Okay, with that, when you check your sugar mm -hmm. for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I need you to write it down so you can bring it in to your next appointment so we can review your readings. Okay. Okay. All right, on top of that, I want to prescribe you a pill which is metformin, 500 milligrams twice a day. So you'll take one for breakfast and one at dinner. Okay, and with all this medication and everything, like how much is it, you know, going to cost? Because I'm on a fixed income and I can't be affording all that on top of my kids and everything. So will there be any assistance or anything I can get with my medications? That's understandable. You have insurance, you have Medicaid, Medicare, and that should pay for it. But if it doesn't, we can refer you to the Lawson Mill Bank and they can assist you. If they can't help you, you call us back and we will get your medicine. Don't you worry about anything. Okay. Okay? So, okay, so back to your medicine. So we're going to get the pill and I'm going to need you to take your insulin as well. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll think about it. You got to try. We got to get your sugars down so you can live. You want to live, right? Right. Okay. So we need you to do that. And I think this is kind of overwhelming for you. So I think it'll be a good idea to get you hooked up with the diabetic educator. Yeah, because there's just so much to learn. I would really appreciate it if I could get more education on it. Yes, ma'am. She'll be able to show you how to use the glucometer. She can hook you up with, with your medication. She can help you. She'll be your resource person. Okay. You can contact her for any of your needs. If she can't help you, then always refer back to us. You can call us. Okay. Well, thank you. Do you think you can do it? I'll try. I know you can. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I feel like Tech well understood that as a nurse, we wear a lot of different hats. Mm -hmm. You know, we guide our patients, we educate them, we encourage them, we advocate for them, and we try to get them to be independent champions of their own health. Oh, that's my favorite kind of patient. I N D E P E N D E N T. Do you know what that means? <laughs> Yeah, so, so to me, exploitation feels like the patient's still ill, but they're kind of coming into their own and they're becoming more independent and self-assured, but still need assistance and reassurance in other areas. Oh yeah, absolutely. I feel like the patient has a good idea how to take care of themselves, but they may still need some assistance at this point. Um, this is basically like the implementation phase of the nursing care plan. Hey, Mrs. Hey, Sarah, how are you? I'm one of the nurse practitioners taking care of nice you today. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I uh, hear that you saw Candace on your last visit. I do. Okay, okay. So how have you been handling your diabetes? How's everything been going at home? Um, it's been going well. I've been taking the oral medication that she prescribed me, but I haven't been taking that insulin, whatever the insulin needles or whatever y'all prescribe me. I haven't taken it and isn't going to take it. Okay, so your reasoning behind that, you're going to have to kind of walk me through why you won't take your prescribed insulin. Um, I just um, feel like it isn't healthy for my body. Um, and I just feel like the pills would do the job better than the insulin. Well, I'm going to stop you right there because what's not healthy for your body is diabetes and your blood glucose being elevated. So I understand that there's probably a lot of anxiety and fear related to you not taking the injections, but we're going to have to get that blood sugar down. I mean, you're talking about some major health issues if we don't get that under control. Well, the pill can't handle what's... The, my blood sugar. The, the pill is doing a good job getting your blood sugar down, but it's not completely where we need it yet. So, like I said, I'm really going to need you to kind of try for us to be compliant with those injections. Um, are there any specific reasons? I mean, I know you said that you had a little bit of family history of diabetes. Uh, are there any specific reasons maybe that you're scared of the injections? 
the um, insulin killed my aunt when she had diabetes. Okay, explain. So I don't want, she had her legs amputated and I don't want that to happen to me. Okay, and I understand your fear about that, but I, it wasn't the insulin necessarily that caused her to lose her legs. Um, amputations are actually a result of elevated blood glucose. So you're actually more likely to have your legs amputated if you don't comply with insulin therapy than if you were not to. Well, I might take it because I, I, I want to walk. I want my legs. I understand that. I understand that. Well, okay. So let's talk about what we have gotten done. Um, as far as your diet, have you made dietary changes? Um, in the morning, I'll get up and eat a piece of toast with sugar-free jelly. Um, lunch, I'll kind of eat what I want. Um, dinner, I may um, eat what I want again. Um, I've been cutting back on the sodas, changing those to diet sodas, but other than that, um, that's basically been, been my um, been my regimen, and I'll check my sugar before um, and after I eat. Okay, well good. It sounds like you're becoming a lot more independent with managing your diabetes. Um, one thing that we do really kind of need to focus on is really getting you on those insulin injections. And we're not doing it out of spite. We're not doing it to try to make you fearful of this. It's really necessary to get your blood sugar down. So let's kind of, let's meet in the middle. You don't want to take the injections. So instead of taking insulin injections daily, why don't we put you on like a once weekly medication? Um, it would still be an injection, but you would be injecting once weekly rather than two, three times a day. Um, it's a medication called Trulicity. If you're willing to try the injections, we can try that. Um, just see how it goes, recheck an A1C in a few months, um, and of course see where we're at with that in combination with your oral therapy. Um, okay. So if you're willing to try it, again, it would be an injection, but it could also let you keep your legs, keep your eyesight, and keep your health for a lot longer. Yeah, because I need to see and I need my legs. I understand that, I understand that. So listen, if you'll work with us, we'll get this under control. You know, I feel like uh, I feel like we're well on our way to getting your diabetes under control. Again, you're you're making great strides. You're a lot more independent with your diabetes than you were. Um, I do feel like we need to talk with a diabetes educator just at least a couple more times, just to kind of make sure we're on the same page here. And uh, yeah, we'll schedule you a follow up. And again, if you ever need anything as far as resources, we're here. Okay. Um, but I just I need your agreement. I need you know I need to know that you're going to try to take these injections. You've told the other two that you're going to try. You have it. So I kind of need some assurance here. You, you've got to take some responsibility for your own health at some point. I'll try. Try or will? I'll, I will try. Understood. Okay. Well, we're going to try that Trulicity. I'm going to send the diabetes educator in to talk to you about it, kind of get her to do a demonstration on how that would work. And again, if you need us, we're here, okay? Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And is that exploitation is like truly showing the patient the value of that nurse-patient relationship. Well, let's talk about how resolution works, like New Year's. Woohoo! Oh, <laughs> nice. oh, how are you? Hi, nice to oh see my you. goodness, you just come full circle, haven't we? Yes. How about you? You look fantastic. Thank you. So, um, got got the rest of your lab work here, and everything looks pretty good. Your lipids That's and all good. that. Yes. Oh my goodness. So it's been a couple of weeks since you were last here. Mm -hmm. And you started on Trulicity. Yeah. So tell me how that's going. That's a once a week thing. How is it working? Um, it's working good. I've been taking, you know, going to get, you know, getting um, the medicine as prescribed. Okay, good. And um, it works way better than the, the insulin they tried to give me before then. Well, yeah, because you have to take it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, um, but once a week, that's mm -hmm. so much easier. It's so much easier. It's so much easier. Convenient. It's a no-brainer. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about, you know, have you made any changes in lifestyle, eating habits, exercise? Yes, habits? I have. I, um, I exercise every day now. Give me um, All right. I know. I exercise every day now. I've been eating um, properly, um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I'm checking my sugars, um, All right. as, you know, um, as I should. Okay. And, um, you know, I know what to do when my sugar gets low or gets high. Um, I, you know, treat them as, treat them as I should. So your education has really helped you a lot. It is. Yeah. It okay. has. It's so key. It's so key. It's good. Well, I, you just sound like you're doing very, very well. Um, now, you were, uh, you were supposed to get some blood sugars for us. Mm -hmm. Can I see what you're sure. watching? Mm -hmm. these like? Oh, okay. Oh, these look really good. Yeah. All right. Well, you just seem to be doing very, very well. I'm just, I'm just so pleased with you, honestly. So, um, um, where are we at from here? You're, you're uh, 
checking your blood sugars. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're really sailing. I think you're doing great with this. It's a lot to learn and you're it still is. learning. You're still still learning. fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if we see you back in about three months, we'll mm -hmm. get an A1C at that point. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised at what that number looks like, okay? And we're aiming for less than 7%. Okay. So um, I think if you're not there, you're very, very close by the time you get back, especially the way you've been doing. Um, um, if you you know, need anything between now and then or have any questions, just give us a holler. Me, the educator, or one of the nurses will get back to you. Um, anything specific uh, about side effects or anything like that, just let us know. I don't anticipate that happening since you're, you know, have already been on medicine okay, for a little well, while. Thank you, um, you know, for encouraging me and just get me on the right, right track oh, and absolutely. gaining control of that That's what we're sugar. here for, girl. That's what we're here for. So that sounds good. Well, let's go get you that follow up appointment. Okay, sure. All right, come on. That is so cool. Oh, okay, very good. Mm -hmm. So, I guess just kind of wanting to summarize this, Patho. So, the orientation phase is when the patient really needs the professional assistance, and um, that's kind of when we come in as providers and begin that process. And in the identification phase, they come to us for help, and then we assess them for what they need so how we can take care of them. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, the exploitation phase, that's the patients become more independent and they're beating goals, but they may still need a little bit of our help. And then the last phase, on um, resolution, the patient is independent. Um, they've made their own goals, and basically the um, patient and the provider has a um, symbiotic relationship. We got this, y'all. Yeah, we did. All right. Yeah. Half low on four. One, two, three, four. Hello! Alright, y'all, I gotta get back to the